Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. And uh, welcome to, oh yeah, I just remember, this is the first show of 2021. I'm amazed that we made it this far and uh, very proud of, of us all for surviving. And hopefully 2021 is going to be a, a much better year. Um, I have a very special guest today. Matt Penman is uh, one of the greatest bassists in the world and um, happens to live in my building. Kind of an amazing coincidence, lives in my building in, uh, in Lefferts Gardens in, in Brooklyn. Um, actually, he's partially responsible for me ending up, uh, ending up in this neighborhood in the first place. Um, and we've gotten to play uh, a bit over the years, um, done some, some trio gigs and, and a few other things with other people. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to welcome him now. Uh, please welcome Matt Penman. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Hi, Dan. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well. Happy to, happy to, be, uh, to be doing this. It seems like a nice way to start off the New Year. I think I can hear you acoustically from the sixth floor. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it down up there. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is definitely going to be like the, the lowest latency jack trip ever done. I mean, the least excuses possible for this kind of operation. Yeah, like we, we literally could just be running a wire uh, from my apartment to Matt's if we wanted to. But we don't, do we? No, we don't want to. We want to. <laughs> we want to keep the challenges up and keep uh, keep jack tripping. Yeah, showing um, off this uh, new technology. It's very cool. Yeah. Well, let's um let's play some music. Let's. Joyce Glasgow says, hello everyone. Here's to a gentle creative new year filled with joy and wonder for all of us. Welcome Matt Penman. Um, and Silvana Raffo says, the one neighbor that does not complain if you play late, maybe. If, if Matt could hear me, I think he probably would not be very happy if I played late, but he can't hear me. It's too far away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, what should we play? Um, yeah, let's play a... Let's play a chestnut that we know and love. Um, How about alone together? Good. All right, we're gonna play alone together. Hi to Losi uh, from in, in rainy Oregon. Hi to Carol. Um, hi to Molly. Hi to George, aka Tommy. Here's alone together.
Yeah, man. Beautiful, man. Mm, nice. Yeah. Woo! I like this. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. It's this great to bad. play. Should we just play another tune? Sure thing. How about, uh, how about Panonica? Great. Yeah? I, I <clears throat> think I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> remember the D flat at the end? Probably. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure you remember it. Um, we're going to play Panonica by Thelonious Monk. Uh, but Bill Chapin says, beautiful rendition, guys. Thanks, Bill. Um, de Tour says, smooth moves. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beautiful solo, man. I, I love those double sp stops. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Um, I've had plenty of time, you know, um, playing without people to mm. fill in the space. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that become a little more prevalent. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'll get shaken out once we're all back to playing in, uh, you know, quartets and octets. And yeah, well, I hope not too much. <laughs> yeah, it's great to hear. All right, um, we're going to play Panonica. Here we go. You want to give us an intro? Mm. Panonica is... Uh,
Woo! Nice. Yeah, Matt. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure playing with you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's um, nice to just play some tunes. It uh, <laughs> happens so rarely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just great being able to play together, you know? Uh, Frank Geyer says, how about something with a faster tempo? Musically, I am curious how a bassist handles faster tempi. Mm. Oh, man. Jorge Roeder is with us. He says, Matt, man, Matt can play some serious double stops. It's one of the few things I witnessed live during the pandemic. That's just but a sliver of his bass mastery. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jorge. Thanks for joining us, Jorge. Likewise, brother. Um, let's do something up. How about, um, should we do one of these tunes I, I wrote? Yes. There's nothing really up there, but there's some stuff that's a little more up. How about we do, um, how about we do, yeah, there's nothing really up, is there? <laughs> uh, well, the, the, your new tune is kind of, um, I wouldn't say it's up, but oh, it's, maybe, it's maybe brisk, you know? And there's some, there's some kind of uh, tight, rhythmic stuff in there. Sure. So we're going to do um, a composition I just wrote late last night for Matt. You know, I've been trying to use these live streams as um, kind of uh, deadlines for, for composing. And so this is um, absolutely brand new. It doesn't have a name yet. And uh, it, it says here 30 minute kitchen timer. Are you, um, oh, are you yeah. cooking something while you're writing this? That's a, that, that's a thing that I like to do to, to kind of get rid of writer's block. It's a, it's a technique that, that Fred Hirsch actually uh, likes to use. And it's, uh, you just set a kitchen timer and say, I have 30 minutes to write this tune. I like that. Yeah. It's yes. really helpful, actually, I find. I don't think I could have actually copied this tune in 30 minutes. Yeah, well, I didn't write it in 30 minutes. I, that timer went on at least three times. It's okay. definitely like a 90-minute like a kitchen timer. <laughs> right, so 30-minute kitchen timer fail. Count yeah. it off. Yeah, but the, the whole point of the kitchen timer is just to get you, get you going, you know. It doesn't matter if you actually do it in 30 minutes. A little, a little pressure. Yeah. Yeah, just get the pen going. If you can't have Fred Hirsch breathing down your, your shoulder, but kitchen <laughs> time is the next best thing. Next best thing, yeah. Um, all right, here we go, guys. This is a tune from Matt Pemmon. World premiere.
Yeah, man. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Thanks for playing that. That's a good tune. Thanks. It's, um, I still, you know, I don't know how it is for you because I, I know Matt actually has a, a beautiful record uh, on the same label that I'm on, on Sunnyside. Uh, it's from a, a couple years ago. And so, you know, I, I know you composed too, Matt. And uh, it is still to this day, I can't really get my head around the fact that you can just sit down and make something that didn't exist before. <laughs> and then it's just like there. And it, it feels it, it feels like it's out of your control somehow, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, personally, I kind of think it's... it's uh kind of magic mm -hmm. you know <laughs> um, and I haven't I haven't heard a very good explanation of um, of composition or improvisation or, or you know um, so I, yeah I, I, I kind of know I know how you feel it's um, when you can really harness it it's uh, it's it's kind of a really amazing human capability uh, it's, it's probably animal capability it's, it probably goes beyond that right but it's like you know the, some kind of universal uh creative possibility that is kind of mind-blowing you know? it is yeah it, it's still just yeah as either, i think when you said it's magic that's like the perfect word because that, that's the way it feels to me it feels like something almost scary because because it's so i don't know i just can't put my head around it you know yeah but then I think it goes back to language, right? Because we're all improvising all the time when we when we speak, mm -hmm. just on different to different levels. And and when we improvise when we play, it's just much more. It's a bit more distilled, and and um, we're really concentrating. And and but language we kind of take for granted. But yeah. that is the human, the great human capability, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Music is, is another language. Um, I'm going to take a, a minute to read a comment from Joyce Glasgow, who, who, uh, who writes these amazingly poetic comments. Um, she says, gliding back and forth on a swing suspended from an old oak tree, breeze blowing through curly locks, cherubic, rosy cheeks, smiling giggles of delight, the smell of fresh grass, the clouds and blue sky, the shadows and shades, the sun's beaming rays, the innocence and wonder of a small child discovering the wonders of life. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Joyce. Yes, thank you for that. Wow. Um, Sounds so like someone's creative juices are uh, flowing at the same time as ours. Yeah, you know, these live streams have been an amazing thing in that respect because um, Definitely some of the people who've been tuning in have been using my music as, as a springboard for their creativity. So like Joyce uh, has been writing poetry and then there's uh, Silvano Raffo who's been actually drawing every one of the tunes that I've been playing uh, in real time. He's just been doing these improvised drawings. And then there's the, the other direction, which is that, you know, sometimes I'll ask for keys or for time signatures or, or for requests. And, and so that's um, challenging my creativity, you know, and it's just been this really fun exchange in that way. Wow. Yes. Um, I wonder how many people just kind of put the music on and wash the dishes. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> some people are doing that too, because, you know, like right now, for instance, um, I don't know, this video might get like two to 5,000 views or something, and there's only, you know, going to be 300 comments or something. So definitely a large proportion of people are Doing the dishes. <laughs> well, good. That's a noble pursuit. Yeah. Um, if anybody has any um, title ideas for that song, mm. please share. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we do another one of mine? Absolutely. We're also um, we're also um, open to, to to requests. If you have some requests. Um, George Thomas Wilson says his sister Mary listens at her accounting job with earbuds every Monday. Hi, Mary. I didn't know that. And that's awesome. Um, okay, so which one are we going to do? Maybe. How about um, late night geometry? 
That's a tune I wrote uh, maybe a month, a month ago or two, and it was named by Silvano Raffo, actually one of the regular listeners on this, uh, on this stream. Grace Chu suggests kitchen sink, but S-Y-N-C. That's, pre that's pretty good, Grace. I got I to gotta hand that to you. Uh, here's late night geometry. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, man, beautiful, man. So I just really wanted to play that last chord with you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you were supposed to, actually, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think it's... It's funny to hear how the, you know, how when you play with bass and piano, normally there's this amazing kind of vibration, vibrating thing that happens when you play in the same register. Yeah. You play bass lines together and you get that, like, mm -hmm. incredible texture. Yeah. Which... Technically, we're not getting now, but it's it's funny to see how much you can get just with intonation, you know, mm. like hearing myself acoustically, but hearing you through the headphones, I can almost get them to vibrate together, mm -hmm. you know, or at least it's probably tricking my mind into thinking that they are vibrating together. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about this process is like we're hearing the audio is super dry in our earphones and we're not hearing it really mixed together in a proper way, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, later, if you check out the, the replay of the live stream, you're gonna hear that it actually really gels together in a way that sounds a lot more like it's in the same room. Yes. By the way, it sounds like my neighbors are doing some serious construction work. <laughs> I hope this is gonna stop. Is someone like chipping old Christmas trees next door to you or something? I don't know. It's something uh, <laughs> pretty serious. Uh, Phil Magnez, who's a beautiful drummer and composer in Paris, who's a old friend of mine, he says, thank you, gentlemen. Matt was definitely supposed to play that last chord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. That's what I thought. Um, and Marlia Reese says, does anyone else hear a drill? Yeah, I, I definitely hear a drill. And it's, uh, it's not subtle. But it just stopped. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully they, they won't go on for too long. Uh, Jorge Roter says, I can vouch for the piano bass blend. So that's good. Thanks, good. Jorge. Thanks for tuning in, man. Good. Great to have you with us. He's a, uh, I don't know, I don't think I've told you this, Matt, but Jorge is like, I think he's the most frequent guest on these, on these, on these live streams. Nice. He's very popular with our audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, justifiably so. Yes. A fine bassist and a fine yeah. hombre. What? Uh, a man. It's, a, it's man oh, in oh, Spanish. Oh, did you say hombre? But said with a New Zealand accent. So yeah, I actually know, know that word. Saying. I just literally couldn't hear you because of the sound of the drill happening <laughs> <laughs> in my neighbor's apartment. Uh, Jen Dutour suggests Construction Blues as the name of the next tune. Yeah, maybe we should play a blues. We could. We could play, and we could kind of um, try and fulfill that up-tempo request as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, Matt's Blankano says, maybe you can play with a drill as a drone tone. The problem is it keeps changing. <laughs> it's like keeps moving by, by a tone or a semitones. Um, okay, what, what should we play? Um, oh, how about, um, what, what's, what's the up-tempo blues we could play? Like... Um, um, <clears throat> take the coal train, or mm -hmm. how about uh, Billy's? Yeah, sure. What's that? Uh, Billy's bounce. Billy's bounce. Yeah. Yeah. An F? Absolutely. Okay, guys. Hopefully, um, this noise won't be too atrocious once I turn my talk mic off. It should be a lot better because the piano mics are actually inside the piano under the lid. Um, and here we go. We're gonna play a blues for you.
<laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's tough with the drill. I wow. have to say. Yeah, it's I like, just noticed the drill is back. Um, hard to uh, hard to really relax into it. At least it's kind of in the key, you know. It's kind of in and out of the key. Uh, but, but I hope for you guys out there, hopefully you weren't hearing the drill nearly as much as I was, because I know it actually insulates the, 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 the sound relatively well that the, that the mics are inside the piano. Um, anyway, man, that was a ridiculous solo. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, a lot of fun. It's, um, I'm just kind of excited that uh, we get to kind of be remote and, um, you know, no one's getting COVID and we're swinging. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had a funny experience. I don't know if I told my listeners this, Oh man, Phil Mania said, I actually pulled out my snare drum and played along with you too. Hope yeah. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta us, pay extra for that, Phil. Send us the video. <laughs> yeah, right. send us the video. Awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, this thing happened where um, there was a, a friend of mine, I won't say who, uh, who, who, uh, who I did um, a ticketed live stream with, a, a duo, duo live stream. And, um, and this person, I'm not even gonna say gender, um, uh, this person was kind of advocating for us doing it together live uh, because they uh, didn't feel comfortable doing it over Jack Trip. Mm -hmm. And I kind of considered it, you know, but then I just thought, no, I think, I think I've gone to all this trouble to make this work in a way that's like really safe and that, and that is, I think, a good example for how we can make music without spreading COVID. And uh, so we did it over Jack Trip and, and uh, they were okay with it. And literally, the next day, uh, it turned out that they had been exposed to, to somebody um, just a couple days before, and then they got COVID. So I might very well have, got, have gotten it if we had played that together in the same room. Mm -hmm. so, um, um, yeah. So it's way pretty to, great uh, to have a way to- Way to it. follow your instincts there. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty great <laughs> to have a way to, you know, to really be improvising together that's totally, totally safe. Absolutely. Do you, do you notice that this is like a, is it kind of closer to reality um, that we're in the same building? This uh, is definitely super minimal latency. I mean, it's, it feels unnoticeable to me, but, but as, I, as I was mentioning, it also felt unnoticeable, unnoticeable when I played with Christian McBride, who's 35 miles away. Yeah. I think the biggest factor, I mean, obviously distance is a factor, but I think even bigger than that is the quality of the internet connection. So Christian had fiber optic internet out there in Montclair and, and so do you in the building. So, you know, that, that really works. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. It's all about the tools. <laughs> Paul James Brown says, can't hear the drill when you're playing. Okay. That's good. Excellent. Good. Nice. Uh, and Grace Chu says, it's like when my mom starts vacuuming during our Zoom calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely vacuum cleaner lo levels of, of loudness. I mean, we've been getting all the windows in this building changed over the course of the last month, right? So yeah. Maybe that's what's happening. Mm, I don't think so, because this is drilling, which I don't think they need to do for that. And it's right underneath my living room. Well, who knows? It could be. Could be. Um, Evan Carley is asking, what kind of latency do you get in a building with versus with Christian McBride 30 miles away? I mean, as I was just mentioning, it's, it's, it's really very similar in that both are really unnoticeable latency. I mean, we're able to play really up-tempo songs. I don't, I don't know if you heard the, the stream with, with Christian McBride, but we played, um, we played Arigen, like, and, and to be able to do that, uh, you, you, you can't have anything higher than like 10 milliseconds of latency. Even 10 milliseconds is a lot at that tempo. Um, I actually, something crazy happened to me last night. I was just telling uh, Matt earlier, I was listening to some, uh, some takes of a recording I, I did over Jack Trip, and my time just sounded so messed up. And I was just kind of getting really down on myself, like, man, you know, you got better, you should change careers. <laughs> because this is not working and then two after two hours of listening uh i realized that i the the that there was a weird plug-in situation in in the way that i was listening that was actually moving my recorded piano tracks ahead of the bass by 33 milliseconds and i tell you those 33 milliseconds just made it sound like absolute garbage 
And when I finally solved that problem, suddenly everything fell into place and I just breathed this gigantic sigh of relief. So uh, yeah, 33 milliseconds is like absolutely un um, uh, in intolerable. <laughs> it's intolerable yeah. latency. So, so this, this has got to be maybe five milliseconds or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah, Jen Detour says, could you maybe ask your neighbors not to drill for one hour on Mondays? That's a great idea. Yeah, this is the second Monday in a row that this has happened. Should we do another one of my tunes? Let's do it, yes. Um, let's do, let's do seconds. Seconds. This is the one that I wrote uh, for Jorge, for Jorge Roder. Nice. That's a fun one. I like this one. Um, Seconds by me with the great Matt Pennon.
Yeah, Matt. Nice one, man. Beautiful. Really nice to play that with you. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a very nice open, very fifth C. <laughs> yeah. Fifth C sound. Yeah, or second C, which is second very C, very right. closely related to fifths. Right. You you get one. Yeah. Um, every second fifth, right? I guess. Yeah, I guess it's Could yeah. Say it like that. <laughs> it's just all seconds, you know, but yeah. Seconds and fifths are basically the same thing. Nice. Indeed. Major seconds anyway. Yeah. Um, Joyce Glasgow, staring into a club, uh, cup of black coffee, looking for some signs, seeing a wide-eyed reflection staring back, smelling the early vapors of the coffee grounds, space made in his head to absorb new ideas, glean from the black well and the waiting aroma waiting for that moment of delivery of an existential inspiration. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so glad that, um, that this music is inspiring such precise and uh, evocative words. Inspiring me to go to the cafe down the road. Yeah, yeah. Get my cortado. Oh, Actually, speaking, speaking of, of which, which, I should probably go and... Man, uh, time has really flown. I'm sorry. We haven't been watching the time. Yeah, you said you had to leave at 3.20. I can't believe how it's... I, uh, I'll just zoom by. Yes, I must go and be a pandemic parent. Yeah. Well, Matt, thank you so much for, for being here today. Thank you for the invitation. And let's do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. The great Matt Pemmon, everybody. I'm going to play um, I'm gonna play one last one for you guys. Um, bye, Matt. Thanks again. Uh, yeah. So that was really special. Going to play with Matt. I can take these off now. Uh, I think I'm going to finish this stream with uh, a free improvisation. Uh, I'm just going to dive in, play some music for you guys. Uh, I haven't done that in a little while. Here we go.
Here we go, free improvisation for you guys to wrap up the stream. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a real joy playing with Matt Penman and uh, just a joy as always to connect with you guys. Thanks for being here today. Uh, Jen Detour says, hopeful improvisation, jolie légèreté for a better 2021. Merci, Monsieur Tepfer and Matt and looking forward to next week. Yes. Molly Shen says, deep pools in this improvisation. Just beautiful. I like that description, deep pools. Yeah, there are some kind of like landing places in that free improv. Oh, hey, Kristen. Kristen Berardi is with us. Hi, Kristen. Kristen has moved to Switzerland. She got a great job teaching at a conservatory in Switzerland, moved her whole family from uh, Australia to Switzerland. So we can do some uh, collaborations now with a lot less latency than we had um, when she was in Brisbane. So we should, we should try that. Thank you, Kristen. And it's a lot less late for you too. Right now it's like uh, 9 p.m. for you versus four in the morning. Uh, hi, Bill Chapin, who says, thanks, Dan and Matt, a great soundtrack to my Monday afternoon. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Um, the, um, for those of you who've been following along, uh, there are some upcoming live streams ticketed live streams. There's one on January 21st with uh, Gilad Hexelman, but I'm actually working on a new way um, for, you to guy, for you to be able to buy tickets. Uh, I want it to be like a lot more streamlined, a lot easier. Um, so that's not quite up and running yet, but um, it will be up and running by next Monday and I'll let you know about it then. Um, Kristen says, oh, I moved so the streams are at a better time. <laughs> Yeah, I know, that's the whole entire reason you moved to Europe. Uh, and I'm glad you did. Um, yeah, and I also had mentioned that I'm gonna do a live stream concert of the Goldberg Variations to celebrate um, finishing the, my Bach Upside Down project with the Goldberg Variations. That date is, uh, is now up in the air. Uh, I need a little more time to just kind of get everything settled. And I'll keep you posted on that. In the meantime, uh, Happy New Year to all of you once again. Here's hoping you joy and peace and health. Uh, hoping us all those things. And I uh, wish you creativity too. And uh, I will see you next Monday. Thanks again for joining me. And uh, take care, y'all.